guys, it's MMFQ Death here with MMFQ Videos, and I just decided to make this video, really. Um, it's, as you can see, 3 a.m. in the morning, and I'm still up. I've been working on customizing Windows all day and all night, um, compiling a bunch of different icons, programs, everything you can think of to make Windows 7 look the most and function the most like Mac OS X Lion that I possibly can. And obviously I'm still not done yet because my folders are messed up, but with Icon Packager, I will probably be doing that tomorrow because I just have nothing left in me. After making this video and editing it, that'll be it. I'm just going to sleep for a week. Um, but, all right, you guys, uh, last time I left off, you saw it was a pretty, well, my version was a pretty rough, estimate of what Lion will look like for you guys. I didn't really install much. I just had, you know, my rocket dock that wasn't really set up like Max or anything down at the bottom. Uh, I had my taskbar up here and had the theme installed. That was about all I did. Um, well, I tried using the installer's expose, um, win expose, which I figured out that is how you say it. I was right. <laughs> um, and I also tried installing the, uh, virtual desktop that comes with it to function like Lion. Um, both of those, I either, I forget which one was which, but one of them I couldn't get to work. And the other one I just couldn't figure out for the life of me, so I just got rid of it. Uh, <laughs> but as far as everything else goes, this is pretty close to being a Mac. Uh, as you can see, Windows Explorer is just reskinned on my dock. And actually everywhere else, I've completely changed the icon uh, from the EXE using a program called Resource Hacker. And Rocket Doc, why are you still here? I keep telling you to go away. I don't want you. I don't like you anymore. I found Object Doc and it actually is good now. Get out. Thank you. All right. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so I also installed an applet for Object Doc and a new skin. Um, I'm... I may put these in the description, but I will, will probably hold off until I get the permissions for the people who have made them, and then I will make a tutorial on how to upgrade my previous installation of the transformation pack to look like this and function like this. Um, if you guys don't want to wait, you can always just, I don't know, uh, search it on Google and hope for the best. Or if you guys like me, then you can subscribe to my channel and just wait for the video to pop up in, in your newsfeed in about a day or two. That sounds like a plan. All right, good. All right, let's continue. So, uh, as you guys can see, I had a uh, person in the comments of the last video saying that his uh, finder bar wasn't working correctly. Like, the transparency was messed up. Well, if this is what you mean by that, let's just use this as an example. You can see when I put it behind there, it stops being connected. Well, the reason for that is, even if you put a program up here, it's just going to go below the bar anyway. So Finder Bar didn't integrate that into its programming. Uh, there is a way to completely fix that, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, what you can do is right click on your desktop, go down to personalize, windows color, and then disable transparency. Uh, and then just reskin the finder bar by right clicking here and hitting skin it. Um, what skin it does is it matches the tone of the finder bar to whatever color your taskbar is. So you can change the color or transparency or whatever, and it'll mask it, but it will not fully function if it's transparent. So if you enable or disable transparency, then, well, you can see where I'm going here. But the problem with that is, is when you open up a window, let's just say this again, you can see that faint shadow around the edge. Well, when you disable transparency, that becomes another little gray line, and it just looks tacky to me, so I don't recommend it. I just recommend don't putting a window up here, and you'll never notice it again. But anyway, uh, let's go in here, and here is the app that I installed for Rocket Dock. It allows you to basically utilize the stacks feature as 
it was in uh, Mac OS X. Whoops, wrong one. But yeah. Anyway, you can use the stacks feature and you can close it. You can click right here to open the folder. And I did the same thing for my Adobe. I gotta get rid of this one and like get one of these, but they don't have one, so I'll probably put that in there and move that. I don't know. But that'll come as time passes. And like I said, uh, my folders aren't done yet, but I will be working on that full icon package. And the sooner I get that done with the permissions for all of the people who made like the athletes and such like that, uh, the tutorial on how to do this will probably be up in one to two, maybe three days. Um, and sorry for that, you guys, but that's really the fastest I can do it. Uh, emails only go so fast, and you know, let's move this over here, and I'm gonna change it to email, but uh, or whatever it's called. I don't, I don't. Even know. All right, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you guys have used uh, Icon Packager in the past, but uh, basically, go here, here, scroll down to Stardock. Object desktop icon package. Well, this is icon packager, and to make an icon package, you have to go through all of these, all of these, all of these, your drives, others, files, all of the file types, and that includes file types that are just used often, like. <laughs> That's not even like all of the file types. If I wanted to go through there, it would take me a year. Uh, the control panel icons, which, as you can see, are quite a few just for control panel and cursors I don't really need to mess with. But uh, all of that I would have to start from scratch and do custom because as far as I've searched, I cannot find even a Snow Leopard one to base mine around. Um, if you guys know anyone who has made one or did make one in the past or you've seen one and you can find it, I will gladly give that person a shout out. Uh, I will also, as if it really matters on my channel, but still I'll try. <laughs> um, I still get a couple thousand views of videos, so, you know, it might help you out a little. Uh, but if you guys can help me out at all, the faster you guys help me, I can help you and I can bring this next video out. But basically right now I'm just rambling on and anyway, let's get back to the one last final feature. Um, right here next to the Apple, you can click and get about this Mac. Now this is buggy because it says my system memory is only 4,096 megs, which concludes to exactly four gigabytes. Um, that's not true, considering that if I click here and right there, you can see I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is wrong, but it is right about my processor, so we'll give it a thumbs up and a little clap for that. All right, no one else clapped? Oh, well, I guess I'm the only one that's happy about that. Okay, but <laughs> um, you can also click right here. And as you can see, software update is there. Mac OS X software is there, even though they're unclickable. It'd be nice if uh, the people who made Finder Bar integrated this into, um, like, Safari. If you have Safari, iTunes, or uh, any other, like, Mac-based program on your PC, then the software update right here would actually start the, so the Apple software update. Um, I think that would be a pretty cool feature. So, a uh, guy who made Finder Bar. You watch us, try to hook us up. Um, anyway, uh, I, I, I don't really know how to use any of this other stuff other than, you know, obviously these. Uh, but you do have the full finder bar functionality as you get on the list. I don't know how to set up stuff for it, but if you do, by all means, go for it. Um, and we're going to end on a little note here. Um, Someone in my last video had asked me how much my computer cost, and it cost me twelve hundred U.S. dollars. Uh, the reason for that being, I have a high-end. Well, compared to enthusiast builds, it's a mid-range. 
but compared to normal overall computers, it is a high-end graphics card. It's a GTX 550 Ti. Um, and if you guys want to see my full system specs, they are available on my channel. They're in my info section, uh, my About Me specifically. Uh, you can go there, you can see my recording software, all of the programs I use to render and edit videos, and pretty much everything else about my videos. All right, you guys, so this has been MMFQ Death with a little tour, just a little update kind of to give you guys an idea of what's been going on and what I've been doing. And I'll try to get that next video out for you guys here in the next couple of days. So uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you guys can. It really helps my channel more than you know. All right, you guys.